I, I think um, as I think about the company, I, I, as understanding how it's been restructured and your efforts at simplifying it, I guess one of the reasons Real Networks is, is still around is that it does so many different things that it probably hasn't been a particularly attractive acquisition candidate o over the recent years because it wouldn't have solved any one problem for, for any significantly larger company. What about five years from now? Do you think the company will be independent? Well, I think we're building the company to be a strong, independent entity, creating great value for the shareholders we have. That's absolutely our vision for the business. I think the fact that we're in diverse lines of business can be helpful, but I think as we go forward more and more, we want to focus on being this provider of applications and services for the mobile multi-screen world. Like thinking about that as our core mission, I think, helps us focus and, and be maybe a little less diverse, but more successful by focusing. So when I think about real networks, I, I think primarily about, about two things, about the real player, which sort of revolutionized how people watched and listened to things on their computers, and Rhapsody, which was the first popular music subscription service. Um, that's what you were known for. Neither one is a, is a major force in the marketplace today. Talk about that a little bit. What happened? Well, I think that... Rhapsody, actually, for, for where it is, is still a major force in its space. Sure. If you look at Rhapsody and subscription music, I think it's still the largest on-demand full catalog subscription music service out there. And actually, I think it's, in some ways, you could say it's coming into its own because people are starting to figure out that cloud services are actually cool and compelling. And I think Rhapsody is still the best of its version for what it does. Um, I think the, the reason it's not a major market force is just the sheer size of iTunes and the purchase of tracks on iTunes dwarfs the full you know, on-demand subscription service. That's a fair point, but it also point, but it also cuts to the to the heart of the matter, which is that Rhapsody preceded iTunes by by many years. Yeah. So the you know the easy thing for me to say is you should have had iTunes, not them. Well, I think that iTunes is more of a phenomenon in some ways of the iPod and how that grew, and there's a lot of history around that sure. that um, relates to who got the licenses from the you know, music labels to, to uh, do uh, full on-demand music. Uh, I think the reality, though, is without the hardware and the connection between the hardware and the software, Rhapsody was just you know, in a very different business and trying to pursue a different model. And I think people, Rhapsody in some ways was ahead of its time. It was frankly way ahead of its time in terms of people's readiness to subscribe to music and be in a, in a full on-demand world. I think with the world moving, though, towards a lot more mobile phones, an expectation of always-on connectivity, these kind of services are, are really starting to take off. And that's where I think you'll see Real focusing its, act, its, its, its uh, development efforts on this idea of you know, always-on connectivity, mobile device proliferation, and the kinds of digital media experiences you can create around that. I think that's where things are going to get really interesting over the next several years. So what, what is a simplification story? Because by, you know, off the top of my head, you're in gaming, you're in music, you're in subscription music, on-demand music, you're in s software that helps devices work, which is a different business from providing consumers music. So w what is the, you know, stand on one leg and tell me what Real Networks is? Real Networks today is simplified by getting out of those core music businesses. So think of Rhapsody right now. We are now an investor in Rhapsody. We own 47%. We no longer operate, run, or control Rhapsody. Who owns the other part of it? Primarily Viacom owns 47%, and then a couple different music labels own the remainder. It's primarily a, you know, it's a business run on, at a board level by Viacom and Real Networks. Mm -hmm. But that has greatly simplified Real Networks' business. No longer do we have to deal with all the complexity of trying to you know, make that business succeed. Uh, we care deeply about the business. We pay attention to it as a board member, but we don't sit on that business. That alone was a massive simplification. Second, making that decision to get out of the license other people's media and sell it space is a great simplification for real networks. So we're much more focused on being a technology provider for this mobile and multi-screen world. Right? Mm -hmm. Building applications and services that make it easier for consumers to access, manage, and play their digital media across all these devices, that's our focus.